Hi and welcome. Today we're going to be answering the question, which users have access to what in Tableau database? Now, if you're a Tableau server administrator, you probably get this question quite frequently and be honest, I get this question quite frequently. So I wanted to build something where users that are not Tableau administrators can actually go in and look for a person and see, okay, what group are they in and what access do they have? So can they see the workbook that I just built? That's essentially the question that people have and that's the question we wanna solve. And we're gonna give them a little bit more data so they can start to understand exactly how Tableau works in the background. So in order to do this, we are gonna be using utilizing Tableau's Postgres database. So you will need to be able to access that in order to do this. We can get with your Tableau admin if you are not a Tableau admin user to kind of walk them through what you want. But I'm going to just show you a demo of what it looks like. And so let's actually hop into the demo first and then we'll rewind back and then walk through the mechanics of how to build it. So here we have what the final product is going to look like. Again, this is not a design or anything like that. This is just for users to go in there and kind of search what they're looking for. You can obviously jazz it up. And here I just made it super quick and easy for someone to go in there and access it. So I'm going to go look for myself. So I typed in my name right here. And so now I can see which group I'm a part of and all the projects that I have. And I'm a part of uh, multiple groups in here. So I'm also a Tableau server administrator. So you can see the multiple groups and what um, projects that group actually has access to. So you can have users in multiple groups and it'll show you know all the groups they're associated with and the project or folders, you know, depending on how you your organization calls it, they're called projects, but those top layer folders, it's going to show you exactly what they have access to. And then on this side is actually going to drill down a little bit more and give you the project folder and the workbook. So say for instance, I know I'm a part of this particular group. When I click on this, it's going to show me every single project folder that I'm able to access um, as a member of that group. But if I click on one particular report, then it'll drill down to that report and show me the workbook names that I actually have access to. So this is super helpful as you start to build things out. So let's go back out and let's just uh, off click of that. You can also search by workbook. So say someone has a workbook they just created and they want to know if someone has access to it. And so this is a pretty popular one that people are asking me about. So if I go in here and I want to click and I want to know who has access to this particular folder, I can click here and now I immediately get a name of all the people that have it and then how they have access to this particular folder. And so it's only going to show the groupings of people that actually have access and then the groups they uh, are associated with that happen to be in there. So for instance, this person, Gonzalez, has access to this particular uh, SUDS folder because they're part of the coding and risk management, they're part of an OFP group, and they're part of a pharmacy group. So this person has access because they're part of this group name. So it makes that association. So a user can go and search either way, and if they wanna come in here and then they wanna say, okay, well, I wanna search this particular project, but I wanna know if this particular person, Jared, has access, they can search that you know, with two different queries. And again, it's gonna show up here and it's gonna say, yes, that person does have access, so there's no problem, they can go ahead and access this and that just solves that question. So that's ultimately what we wanna build, something that's pretty robust and you know, pretty simple to use like that. So let me go into the backend and show you how this is done. So there's gonna be about four steps in order to create this less stress environment where users can go in and see who has access to what, what groups they're part of, and what projects and workbooks can they access, and even the views that they can access. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on querying the data. And this it actually took the most amount of time trying to figure out which tables Tableau was actually using to be able to create all these different rules and try to get everything so it was something that was human readable. So I'm going to walk you through that. That's what's going to take you the most amount of time if you don't have a shortcut. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a view. So the dashboard that you just saw, we had views in there. So we're going to build that. We're going to actually build out the dashboard. I'm going to show you how to do some of the action filters and it's pretty quick. And then lastly, we're going to publish it so we can share it with other people. So let's dive in into querying the data first. Okay, so here we are in PG Admin, And I'm just using PG Admin because it's easy for me to write the queries in here and kind of work with this, but you can also build all this in Tableau. You don't have to do it in here. It just made it easier for me to write the query out and um, kind of build it out the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to go to my databases right here. And so the name of the actual Postgres database that Tableau uses is called Workgroup. So when you actually log into your database, again, credentials and everything like that, you want to watch the Postgres, uh, Tableau's Postgres database uh, tutorial. But it's called Workgroup, and we're going to go to our schemas down here. 
And so the default schema for Tableau is going to be this public. So um, good to know, especially if you watch our hyper training, um, uh, hyper API uh, defaults to this public thing just because it wants to be Postgres compliant. Um, so yeah, you go to this public folder and so you have different things. So you have views right here and then you have tables. So you can see there's over 255 different tables that are supporting all of the user actions that occur in Tableau. It's ridiculous. There are a lot of tables in here. Let me just open this up real quick so you can see how confusing this could get very quickly. And if you're a Tableau admin, you are already familiar with all these different tables in here. They just, they track everything. So anything you need, and it's not they, but you have all of the different things that you need in here. So I recommend if you're starting out, mostly just use the views. The views are updated. It's the same data from here, they just kind of made it a lot easier to use. And in this particular project, I use views because I didn't need any robust data. But all these tables do have bigger views. So especially I'm using the users table. Um, you would have to use the system users table and the regular users table in order to get kind of what we have done at just one table in here. So very handy. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the first query that I built here. And so this is going to be a user access. And so this query is going to be split into two parts. One is going to be user access and the other one's called group access. So in this table, I just want to know which users are part of which group. That was the question that I wanted to solve. I bought in some extra data just so I could use it for other reports. And especially because I had to use some real level security. So this came in handy. But essentially, I just want to know Based on this Tableau username, I want to know which group they're part of, because if I know which group they're part of, then I can, you know, let the users know, OK, hey, this person is at least in this group and this group has access to this project. So that's kind of the workflow that we use. So I separate out my queries just so I can use the query separately, but you can put them all together. And so let's just go to the tables that we use, because that's the most important part. And if you wanted to build something similar to this, uh, you can just use this right here. And also, if you click on the link below, uh, it'll take you over to my website where you can download all of the scripts, everything that I'm using, the workbook, all the data, you can go ahead and do it. One thing, we are connecting to a Postgres database, so you're going to have to know your user credentials in order to get in there, but you can still have the workbook, send it to your admin and say, hey, I'm trying to get this live, can you just help me do this? And they'll just put their user credentials in there and you'll be good to go. So it's pretty easy. So again, the first thing I did was create this user access table. Again, this could be leveraged for multiple things, so that's why I separated it out because I had another project going on. And right here, we can see that we have the uh, the Tableau username, the full name, um, just the last time we've logged in, and this group ID using this structure right here. And this group user table kind of brings everything together. It's what unites the user and the group table. So you want to make sure you have that Tableau user group there. So that was the first thing I did. Then I went ahead and built this one, which provides the group access, which this one's where it gets complicated, but you are going to need this table right here, which is the next gen permissions. This controls all the permissions for all the different groups. And earlier I said, you need to have some type of structure into how you implement your security. And that's where this part comes in because the grantee type and the, authoriz the authorizable type uh, are kind of key components into making all this work. And if you don't have a certain set where you actually use groups and projects, then there's other ways in which you can view because there's different types, um, different types for both of these uh, these columns, but you need to understand the types in order to be able to build this out, else it's going to return false data because it's just numerical data that it's returning because we're using the ID. And so we want to filter this data out. So that is your query that you're going to need to use. Again, in the link below, you can click on it. You can download this, bring it in. And I'm going to do a bigger training, full training on this on that site as well, where you can go in and kind of learn what these tables are and how to bring them together. So that's what we have here. So we finished our first step, which is gathering the data. So next, we're going to head over to Tableau and see exactly how to connect this and start building our view. So here you can see we have all the different views that you can use. Again, I would primarily just use the regular tables, but uh, you fuse it right here. But again, I just use custom SQL to build this out. So we have our users and users and it ends in a group ID and then it connects right there. And these are two tables are connected based on that group ID. And again, this just returns the groups and everything that we want to see in there. Um, and so I made that connection right there. So the first thing we're going to do is, and I actually still have this filtered from my demo, so let me clear this out so we can get all of the data. So I created two uh, workbooks. One is going to be, or worksheets, I should say, a users and a workbooks table. And this users just allows me to see all the users and kind of which project they're a part of. And it's pretty much straightforward. I just want to use it to be able to click on a name and then get all the information like we saw. And then here we have 
all of our different project folders that we have on Tableau server and then the workbooks associated with them. And then, you know, it can drill down into more details. If you want to bring the views in, we also have the views in that query. So you can see the actual view name. If you want to, I have that set up over here again, not really important for what uh, the use case that I needed. And then lastly, we brought it all together in that third step to build this dashboard out. So, um, you just drag in your worksheets, build it out, kind of make it look the way you want to. If you want to add these filters in there, which is the search filter parameters, all you have to do is go here to filters, click on it, and you can select the item that you want to bring on there. Make sure it's floating just so you can have it uh, wherever you want it. And then to get this kind of wildcard search look, you just select that. I didn't do anything fancy. I didn't build a custom string query. I technically could have just created one uh, search box and you can search by any one of these names. But again, I really wanted to make this super simple because it took so long just to get the data model together and figure out which tables to use. But once you have that all together, you have it in the view and for actions, I actually didn't even create special action filters. I just used the quick filter um, actions that were built into here and it worked out perfectly. So I didn't even create any custom actions. You can always go in and create custom actions if you want to. But yeah, as you can see, I didn't name them, didn't do anything. It just searches all fields. So you click on this, it filters everything there, but you can make it a little, you know, less robust or more robust, whatever you want to do by just creating your filters and filtering those views out. But I just use the quick filters in this um, just to get it done. And you see it works better than anything I would have done. So that is how you can build uh, this type of view right here. And all you have to do is just publish it and share it with your users. And I mean, I just published this, uh, I want to say last night, it was probably around, <laughs> around 11 and seven o'clock this morning, I got an email saying, oh my God, thank you. This is amazing. So this is really great. And you can search users by first name, last name, and everything here. You can search for any work, uh, workbook or project or anything like that. And it just makes your life so much easier here. So. That is how you build that. And again, if you want to click in the link below, I will give you access to the actual workbook so you can build a workbook yourself as well as a SQL query. So if you want to build this in Postgres SQL, then you can build that out and make it robust. And then also have a training where we go really in depth. We walk over the tables. We show you everything that you need to know and understand about how to use the Postgres database in order to get user data. All right. So that's all I have for you. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.